So what we're going to be looking at today is how to create some interesting watercolor effects using grounds. We're going to be working on today uh, the arches, the hot pressed paper, which is smooth. It's 140 pounds, and this is basically 7 by 10. And so um, you can see this is an artist block, meaning that it is sealed down so that it holds the paper smooth so that the moisture doesn't warp or undulate the paper. Um, it has a little slot here where you just slide a palette knife to release the paper once you're completed. But what I've done is I've traced um, or drawn the image out so that it's ready so that I know what I'm going to be working on. And what I'm going to do is take some uh, core light dimensional ground. This is a light, fluffy, textural absorbent material that can be added to any uh, watercolor paper or treated surface. And um, it just has a slight bit of uh, titanium white added to give it a nice bright white look. Um, and it's very easy to use. We're going to be applying that. And today I'm going to be applying some stencil texture. So this is the Star Shower stencil from uh, the Crafters Workshop stencils. So um, you can see some of the um, packaging here if you were looking for the Crafters Workshop. And this is Star Shower. Uh, but of course you can use any stencil that you like. And I'm going to offset it because I just don't like, you know, I don't like containment. I don't, I like it to be a little bit more organic and free. And I'm just going to overlap. And I've just got a flat edge palette knife, but you can use any palette knife to do this. And you can actually tint the dimensional ground with color if you like, but I'm going to let it dry white because I want my surface to be texturized, but I want it to be totally um, white starting off for when we add the color. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take out some of the fluffy material. It's kind of got the consistency of a marshmallow cream. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to spade it and I'm going to flip this book because I want to work away from myself, meaning that I want the stencil to be completely flat, but I want to just go away from the imagery, right? So I'm going to take the spaded um, uh, material and I'm just going to hold it so that I can get a smooth, even coating on the pattern that I'm looking for. And I'm just going to scrape that excess off. I want to make sure that I get it here as well. And I, I can see the drawing through, so I'm not actually overlapping on the drawing at all. And when I do the release technique, I have a little bit of the pattern work there that you can see. Now, what I can do as well is I can take, you know, a clean palette knife or whatever, and I can just scratch off this texture that overlapped on the drawing if I want that to remain clean. And I can actually just put that right back in the container and use it again um, because I have a little bit of a shelf life as far as open time. Open is the workability time of the actual material. And I had say I'd have about maybe five minutes of workable time for this dimensional ground. So I can just put that excess back in the container. Now, I also want some dimension down here on the fabric. Um, so I'm just going to put a little bit of texture here, even though... You know, it's not quite as clean as the top as far as having the imagery down. You can also tape your stencil so it doesn't move around. I'm just a little bit more impulsive with mine, but you certainly can tape down to get a cleaner stencil if you want. But I just want to put a little bit of patterning down here to create interest. And then I'm just going to clean my stencil and place it to the side and put a little bit more. I'm going to use some more of the small star patterns here. And again, just glazing on there with the light dimensional ground, getting a nice smooth surface just for some interest. Um, I just don't want, for me personally, I don't want just the pattern to be up here at the top surface. So I'm just going to create a little bit more. Lift up that stencil. Okay. And then I'm going to come back up here to the top and apply some more as well. I'm just going to uh, place it over where I think that I saw texture needed to be added. And I'm just going to smooth that out, working away from myself. You don't have to, but for me, I just find it easier to hold the stencil and just move away in a smooth, flat angle. And I'm 
gonna lift up as well. And so I'll work fairly quickly, keeping that workability um, in, in mind. And then I can come back and use the clean palette knife and just scrape this excess off my edge. And again, I'm just placing that back into the container. And, you know, one consideration might be, I'm gonna take anything that's not, you know, clean, as far as just looking like a star pattern or any of this excess that I want that's not on the actual uh, child themselves. And what I might also choose to do is put maybe, you know, a star or two on the actual, um, baby itself just so I can have some more you know texture on the skin so I'll put just three little stars there and lift that up and then I'm going to use the same uh, cleaning technique to just remove the excess because it's all about creating the interest not you know perfection so to me, some of the subtleties that are there are just, you know, adding some extra interest to the um, image. I'm going to do another one, I think, up here on the top in the blanket series as well. And I've got a little bit of a different palette knife for more control. And I've got a couple more stencils up there. So I feel better about this, evenly distributed. And I had a game plan when I started, and I said, you know what, I'm gonna go a different direction, and that's okay. Um, I'm gonna level off some of these stencils just so that I can smooth out the texture. I do like a little bit of texture, but it's not consistently smooth. So I'm just gonna take the parts that are more peaked and just lightly pull those over. So let me get a close up of this. I'm gonna let it dry. It'll take about, you know, maybe 10 or 15 minutes for it to completely dry. And then I'll come back and put the wet media on it. But that is um, stenciling with the core light dimensional ground and prepping a surface on a watercolor paper.